Sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip That started from this tropic boy, a boy, this tiny ship The mate was a mighty sailing man, skipper brave and sure Five passengers set sail that day for a three-hour trip There again to another episode of Neighborhood Training. Uh, this week we're going to continue on with our North Falmouth uh, breakout of uh, different neighborhoods. Um, before we were working in the Nye's Neck, uh, Silver Beach area, and now we're going to be working in the two neighborhoods around Fiddler's Cove. I uh, put these both together. I put the Seascape uh, neighborhood in along with the Fiddler's Cove uh, area in kind of the same uh, neighborhood program here, basically because of its central feature, <laughs> which is not hard to find here, uh, Fiddler's Cove. And the, uh, the marina is on the... Um, we're all pretty familiar with the uh, Phyllis Cove Marina, which is one of our target hazards for this area here. If we just think about that for a moment, um, we know that, that we have um, quite a bit of boat storage there in the wintertime. Um, obviously this picture here is taken in the summertime because the piers are all full, but the wintertime um, the whole parking lot and everything else is filled up with fiberglass boats, uh, barely a foot apart. So, you know, we have to keep that in mind of our fire potential for fire spread. And also here we have our boats uh, fully loaded. Now this is the pier here that has that standpipe system on it here, and you can see why. I mean, it's quite a long uh, pier here, and if we were to the whole emphasis behind having that pier standpipe is that if you, it will be on the reach of your um, attack lines. So, but anyway, our main focus uh, today is to work on the seascape and Phyllis Cove neighborhoods. So, right over here is where uh, we're going to be working initially, and then we're going to cross over and uh, do this section over in here. So this is the uh, setup here with, ah, here we go, okay. Um, so our, our entry into the Seascape neighborhood is going to be, not main entry road, where is this? Uh, how come it's not showing where we are? Ah, here we go. Okay. Here it is right here. Just obstructed with this view of the way Google is showing this now. So, this is Waterside Drive, main entrance in, and the first road that we're going to come to is Anchorage. And uh, Anchorage really just takes, it, it takes a loop around over to the left and stops, but Anchorage also comes all the way down to a cul-de-sac uh, arrangement over in here. So that's uh, where we go with Anchorage. And as we come up the water side, the water side itself loops around. Uh, those are the two uh, this is a good a good section here. Um, waterside comes up and swings all the way up to the top and actually comes all the way back down and comes this is actually part of waterside drive over here and comes back over to here and does one big loop around where seascape lane cuts across here. Waterside Drive actually goes all the way up and around and back. So if you think of Waterside, it goes along the water side, along the whole water side of the seascape. And the other road we have is Highcrest Road. 
through is a cross section here. But as you can see, that's the layout of the uh, development there. It is all uh, single family residence. It is a highly seasonal area. And it's a little different than um, Nye's Neck. Nye's Neck has been uh, transforming recently. A lot of large uh, houses have been done through uh, teardowns. Whereas this area here is not so much. There's still a lot of um, reasonable sized houses in there. Capes, ranches, garrisons, and so forth. Uh, some of the ones that are along the water obviously are a lot larger but um, not to a, a fantastic extent. Now, so we run along over in here. Now, the um, Fearless Cove. Now, we need to keep in mind that when we go into Fiddler's Cove, I'm going to back up here a little bit, back out a little bit, okay. This shows a little bit better the network, the road network in Fiddler's Cove. And we come off of Wild Harbor Road and we take a uh, right onto Ryder Road. Now right up in here, this juncture right here, is where it splits off. And Ryder actually becomes a dirt road and goes off to the right. And Fiddler's Cove actually, Road actually begins right up here. So we have to keep in mind um, where we're going. So we come in off of uh, Ryder Road. Five Gate Lane is right to our left, a little cul-de-sac. All the houses here have their little docks right on the edge here. That little man-made channel there. And see now Ryder splits off over to here. And then becomes a dirt road and then comes up to Eldridge and Stewart Road up in this section up here backing uh, up to the backside of Phyllis Cove runs up Eldridge up over in here and these are all dirt roads up in here and the other road that comes off of that is this sweet road now this is a long dirt road there's this um, one kind of a state setting house up there. Rick Armstrong uh, lives right up there. There's like a horse barn here and the main house is right up there on the hill. But it continues on to a group of uh, summer cottages right on the end of Sweet Road. And what will become important with that, as we will see as we go on, that there is no hydrants, no town water in that section of Ryder Road. And if we get an opportunity here, which we will, uh, we'll do a quick quick little bit of measuring here. We'll do a quick little bit of measuring here. And just to get an idea how long we are looking at path in feet. Here we go. Uh, from the just from the uh, juncture where it breaks off and just following it up just to go down this sweet road we run into um, over 1200 feet so to get to these cottages out on the end we're talking almost 1600 feet so we'll uh, We'll need to keep that in mind. But the best uh, tactic there is we do need to get a continuous water supply. That would be our strategy for fire. And if we did get a fire out on these areas here, you wouldn't be able to see them with no hydrants or anything else. So we got to remember if we do a fire there, try and grab a hydrant right out on Ryder or Fiddler's Cove and just lay in as far as you can. And the next engine in will piece it together and our objective is to get a continuous water supply and the same thing over here in this section of uh, Ryder Road over here whoop okay gotta clear that hold on a second here we start there uh, 
start there and this section of Ryder Road getting out into these um, Eldridge and Stewart Roads the same thing we're going to be looking at over 1200 feet so but that's okay lay the lay it in the road we'll make sure nobody drives over the couplings and try to avoid running over the hose best we can kick it over to one side as we can but we'll have the next engine come in and pick that up but um, okay so then we have so we came in off of uh, Ryder and we hit five gate right on the left and the next road we come to this loop area here is Deer Run Lane we had a fire there back in uh, May I believe uh, right around this area here that fatal fire up there and we end up in Fiddler's Cove so all right that's enough of that um, we'll take a quick look at some of our other map mapping resources I might uh, just familiarize us a little bit more with what we're working with here I'm sure everybody familiar with it the area yeah. seem to go up there quite frequently so the uh, seascape neighborhood has hydrants all over the place as you can see you know we got these uh, red hydrants everywhere you go so they're very pretty good shape is our main entrance water side and uh, coming in water side anchorage going across and there we go with our loop around there and you continue up uh, water side drive runs up all the way around here this map to fill in here a little bit and you can see all the uh, docking resources that are around there all right so then we come down around here for a water side and then water side and actually it's kind of a unusual arrangement the best I can figure out here by looking at the numbers is that water side actually they allowed this to continue to be water side drive and come through here so the numbers come down 88 90 92 96 and 202 and um, the 191 is right across there but those 202 206 209 so it comes back out and then where it intersects with uh, seascape lane so now we can come in off of uh, anchorage I mean not Anchorage, Waterside and uh, Anchorage and if we took a right we actually come to Seascape Lane which cuts up through and then uh, Highcrest which cuts across here okay then we'll jump across the other side of Fiddlers and just spend a little time over there just like we did on the other map uh, resource is just look briefly at the setup over off of uh, Riders Road, Rider Road. Okay, so there's Five Gate. Actually, the first road. Uh, actually, the first road you get on your left is actually there. We go. The first actual road you get on your left is Five Gate, but there is a um, small cul-de-sac here. It's actually not even a shouldn't be called a cul-de-sac um, because these houses here oddly enough as you'll see are numbered Wild Harbor Road okay so that's a little tricky that we have to um, it's a little tricky and we have to keep remember that we, we've seen this in a few places I believe it's off of uh, Mill Elm Road I believe up in Katie Hatches the house is actually front on Elm but um, the access to them is off of Katie Hatch and this is the same situation here we got some houses right here in the corner that even though they have Wild Harbor addresses numbers they're actually only way they can be accessed is off of Ryder 
good thing to know. And then we have five gate lane that runs in, run up and here's our intersection here with uh, where it changes over the Wild Harbor and Ryder. And with this section all becomes dirt, section over in here. And then we come to Deer Run, this 28 Deer Run where we had that fire. And uh, all these houses you'll notice have their little docks uh, on that little channel there. And then Phyllis, uh, Phyllis Cove Road actually comes into Phyllis Cove, which we uh, we have had an exterior fire on this uh, club cottage over here. That was kind of a surprise where we got the box, came in one time, and uh, 23 came up there and uh, found they actually uh, had a good good fire on the outside. It was just breaking its way into the building. Um, so then we come in, we'll just uh, swing up in here. And here's where the water stops. There's no water up in this whole section up top. So Ryder is going to come up. And then we have Stewart and Eldridge. And it's a small little community up here. It's a little secluded. And um, you know, the house numbers aren't too well marked. So we are going to have to look out there. The roads are a little narrow and they're, they're dirt and they're uh, kind of muddy. I don't know how well they're plowed in the wintertime. So as you can see, there is uh, no hydrants anywhere there. And we'll just, uh, nothing else connects over to this sweet road. Um, now they, uh, you'll see over here, I haven't touched on it too much, it says Rand Beach Road. Um, as we work our way down, we'll see that there's really no addresses on that. But it is a little dirt way around Rand's Canal, which we'll look at in some future episode of Neighborhood Training. But there's uh, there's a dirt road, sweet road coming down, and where it connects off to there. Okay. All right. So in here, this house here. Now this is a, we're going to need to. Uh, you know, always be cognizant of these things that we have, you know, these long driveways. We might have a house number out front, and uh, we have a tough situation getting into that house there. All right, let's look. Um, once again, let's take a quick look at this map. This isn't going to really tell us too much more than we don't already know. Uh, okay. Wait for it to come up here. All right, okay, all right. All right, so this is the same thing. This is the town of Falmouth map. It shows on their website. Um, pretty, you know, it's a nice clear map. There's good visuals to it showing, you know, we have uh, the interesting thing here is just, you know, <clears throat> keep in mind we have the nice thing about this. It shows us the size of the mains that are up there. And uh, we good sized mains. These are all fairly new. And now and then it tells us what, um, so, uh, year they were put in, but I would imagine these are probably the 50s and 60s. Uh, six inch mains. So we have a pretty good um, water flow up there. And we'll just swing over to the other side over here. And wait for this to load up here. Well, there we go. All right, so that's not telling us anything we, you know, really didn't know. We got some good, some good uh, water supply in the other areas here that we have. Um, we have a eight inch main coming off of here into five gate. And then we have um, this whole deer run area has, has a six inch up there. So. Uh, it takes a while. Okay, here we go. So then we have a nice loop system of Phyllis Cove. And here's this whole section up here, a sweet rider, uh, Stuart Eldridge, where there's nothing, you know, available up there. And here's that Rand Beach Road over the side that is just really a, a, a cart path that we'll deal with off. Uh, just runs around the outside. 
Okay. All right. Now, we'll take a look at some of the, uh, <coughs> pardon me, um, take a look at the, some of the photos from that area here. This should be, if I have it set up right, should be the entrance, yep. Yeah to seascape, which I'm sure we're all familiar with. But I, I find it's helpful to, to take a picture like this or to visualize it because sometimes we're looking for the street sign, but sometimes these development uh, kind of signs here, you know, are larger and they kind of give us a good clue as to, you know, where we're going. So it is well marked, Waterside Drive, Seascape. And let's see, we'll go next. Um, to just to show you some of the size houses that are in there. I mean, here's one house here. Obviously, it could be in Tanglewood. It could be just about anywhere in town. Split level ranch, probably, you know, 11, 1200 square feet. Um, then, let's see, we'll go to this one here. This is a smaller house. It's uh, once again, it's a little small place, probably you know, thousand square feet, probably uh, just a little ranch with a garage, fifties, uh, probably fifties, sixties vintage ranch. So we have some uh, diversity of the size houses up there. Uh, okay, let's look at one more from up there. Look at this one here. I believe this one here. Here's one of the. Here's the other end of the spectrum. This is a house that's. Um, this house here is actually, if I recall, on Five Gate Lane. So, um, which I never recall whether it was on Five Gate. Or anyway, doesn't matter. It's in the neighborhood anyway. This particular house here. Uh, it's a pretty good sized house, probably a good, you know, three to three thousand square foot house anyway. And another uh, place that we'll point out is this one here. Here's a here's a house on uh, Deer Run Lane, right in the Fiddler's neighborhood. So, you know, it's a colonial. Pretty decent size, but not really ostentatious. But it's, um, you know, we have quite a variation of the type of structures that were in there. But it is, uh, you know, a good standardized wood frame house as opposed to this place here, which, uh, you know, we would look at and go, well, is it wood frame? Is it stone? What? Well, it is. It's wood. It's a wood frame house, and the stone here is obviously just a, a veneer on the outside. But well, obviously, a little different uh, size than the other uh, places. Okay, um, we'll look briefly right now. Okay, why don't we go to right here. Um, yeah, as we go up into, there we go, where it splits off onto that dirt road, there is good signage up there, which is very good. And uh, a good sign, right of road to Stewart Lane in Eldridge Drive. So that's a real, uh, that's a good benefit they have. I don't know how reflective it is at night, but at least it's out there. And uh, some of the, one of the cottages that's out at the end of Sweet Road is this little place here. Probably, you know, seven, eight hundred square foot cottage overlooking the water, but uh, kind of rustic. Probably uh, open frame cottage. 
So that kind of wraps that up, just to give us an idea of what we're you know, facing, the difference in the size dwellings and the construction. And we will just do some review here into the Fillers Cove seascape in Riders, Rider Road neighborhood. And so seascape, there's uh, 113 single family dwellings. I didn't see any apartments, accessory apartments, or uh, home businesses, or business at all. Uh, the only thing we have in that area is the Fiddler's Cove Marina. This is the Fiddler's Cove area, everything over in Deer Run, Riders Road, that area that's 57. Wood frame varying size from probably 1,000 to 2,500 square feet. So about 300 or so, 300 plus residents. It is a uh, highly seasonal fluctuation. So roads are in, in Seascape. The main roads are Waterside Anchorage. Uh, Anchorage probably isn't so much of a main road. Um, it kind of does a loop around, but I put it as a, a main road because it connects to uh, Seascape Lane and the other side of um, we do Seascape Lane connects to Waterside, so, and then Highcrest. And then over on the other side, Fillers Cove, we have Riders, Fillers Cove, Five Gate, Deer Run, and just remembering on the dirt section, there's no hydrants, Sweet Road, Eldridge, Stewart, and that's important when dispatching. The dispatchers have got to look this up ahead of time, and when you don't see those hydrants there, you got to clue in. The responding apparatus that we don't have hydrants in that area is going to be very important. Uh, here we go, Phyllis Cove. Just kind of some of the hazards we have, and that's our response. Station three rescue twenty three twenty four. And this is pretty standardized for this area, but the reason I throw that up there is because in as we move into other areas of town we may be in the same neighborhood or we may be just outside of it on the line and it's good to know where that uh, where that line is and here's our response time um, from station three to the end of Waterside Drive by a mile uh, 1.8 mile mile and three quarters should be able to get up our, our response time from the time of call to time we get on location should be five minutes or less and station four, um, here we got five miles. So here we're talking, where we're talking about before, with 23 we'll get on, on location very quick. 24 we'll get there um, five or six minutes later. And then the next responding apparatus is five or six minutes after that. So here is one of the important reasons why station four is important because without station four, we would have this engine going, we'd have this engine going, and you'd be arriving uh, almost 15 minutes after the first piece got there. And then your third piece would be station five, which is, you know, 10 and a half miles out. So you're talking without station four there, even though it takes them a little while to get out there, at least they're closer than the other pieces. So anyway. 12 minutes, about 17 for headquarters to get out there. So that's a long time for a ladder truck in the third engine. Uh, so, and from station two, it's 12 miles, 12, almost 12 and a half miles to get up there. So, it's anyone's guess, 15 plus 20 minutes. Uh, that's a long time. Now, those were um, some of the travel distances from, I kind of did some research through uh, the, the Google Earth and everything. And I, I was curious now and then to see how close there was. And so I went to the Deer Run fire that was in May and it found that 23 got there in four minutes. You, it's a little closer to station three than say where I've been taking these um, uh, response times from. These are from Waterside Drive. So, you know, Deer Run's probably three quarters of a mile or less there. And, you know, this is for a house fire. So, you know, everybody might have made it out, but this is from the time of call to the time on location, four minutes. We were looking at five up there for Waterside, 24. It took them 10 minutes to get there. 
on a building fire. So 23 was there about six minutes before the second engine came. And here we have the same six minute difference there. Um, and then uh, 21, it took them uh, 16 minutes from the time of call to time on location, which is quite a long time for your third engine. And the ladder truck, because it was un unmanned at that time, you know, arrived probably 20 minutes after the fire. So, that kind of wraps up the Seascape and Rider Road area. And uh, next week we'll work a little further down into North Falmouth. And uh, I appreciate your uh, paying attention and I hope you're able to grab something out of it. I know that I have. And uh, stay safe. And I'll with you again, the skipper too, a